Well, hey there, marketers. We all know that we need to be creating valuable, high quality content for our websites, for our blogs, for our social media to position our firms as experts in the industry and to generate new leads. But how do we do that? What types of content should we be putting together? What is the format? How do we make it less about us and more appealing to our ideal clients? And what if we're a small firm or a marketing department of one? What kind of process can we create to make sure that we have consistent content going out? And then how do we measure our success? You know, this is a lot of effort. How do we make sure that it's working? If you have questions like these, then today's episode is for you. I'm continuing my conversation with Brian McCartney, who is the chief creative strategist for ArcMark. ArcMark is a branding and marketing firm for architects. We started our conversation in the last episode. So if you missed that, make sure you go back and listen to that because this conversation in today's episode builds on that. So in the last episode, we talked about he reviewed over 500 AEC firms website and came away with some key takeaways on that research. And so he shared that with us. He also talked about four or five pillars of website performance that he uses to grade those websites. And then he talked a little bit about SEO and he broke it down for us in the three different layers of SEO. So if you're not unfamiliar with SEO, it's a really good kind of basic episode to start learning about SEO. And he talked about some of the ways that him and his team help firms, architecture firms, that's predominantly who he works with, get found online. So again, that was the first part of our conversation. And today we're continuing We're going to be talking about what firms get wrong with their blogs and what you can do about it. Maybe not posting news and what you should be posting instead. And so he calls it less about we. And then how to set up a process, a content creation process. So you get consistent, high quality content. And then how do you measure success? So how are we measuring it all? And then we go through my traditional rapid fire questions, but stay till the end in those because he talks about a really cool tool. I'm not going to name it now. You got to listen to the end that will take a blog article and create a campaign for you that can go out 12 months or six months and it uses AI and it does it all for you. So you'll have to stay till the end to listen to see what that tool is called. It's super awesome. So here we go. Here's part two of my conversation with Brian McCartney. Hey there, welcome to the Marketers Take Flight podcast. I am your host, Lindsay Diven, founder of Marketers Take Flight and the creator of the Proposal Pro course. I am obsessed with helping AEC marketers just like you put order back into the proposal process, create winning strategies, and build the confidence and courage to advance your career. Each week, I will be sharing tangible and tactical advice and inspiring interviews to fly through the proposal turbulence and have your career take off. So let's dive right in. How do some firms go wrong with their blogs? What are some of the key mistakes with their blogs or their content on their websites that you you saw from your evaluations? So I was just talking to David LaCour. I think you know him. And we were talking about this idea. One of the things that they get wrong is that they focus on news. and. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm talking about things like, hey, we just won an award or we either won a new project or completed a project or we hired somebody. Mm -hmm. Great stuff to share. Mm -hmm. But how is that relevant to your future clients? Yeah. Yeah. I see a lot of we just made so-and-so associates or partners or principals or we won a lot of a lot of design projects or design awards like AIA design of the year or something like that. Yeah. And, and for us, you know, David likes to call it the we problem, right? (laughs) All all we're talking about is ourselves, you know, it's like we, 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 right. So I think, you know, that's what you have to look at is, is your content for you and other people in the industry or is it for the clients that you're trying to attract? Mm, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So are you recommending that they, that firms should not post quote unquote news or we content on their blog? Or, and if so, what should they be posting? I absolutely feel that that has a place, mm -hmm. right? I think we should celebrate our wins. I think we should celebrate, you know, new people that we're bringing on board. We should make them feel comfortable and, and show that they're part of our team. That's one thing I, I really get frustrated is when firms don't show the actual people who work there. Mm -hmm. That's a real pet yeah. peeve of mine. And it, that stuff provides social proof. It's important, but there's also, you know, the, the content that is going to actually engage your ideal client, your future client, that is really important. And through working with firms, we've helped a, a number of firms rethink about their content. We have found that there are three key categories that kind of work that, you know, if they can get these right, not only is it going to help them get found online, but it's also going to help them be seen as a valued resource, as a, you know, as experts. Like or as go a knowledge to, you know, center. Yeah, as a knowledge center, as a helpful resource. And the categories or the topics that we like to focus on, that we have fun names for them. So the first mm -hmm. one is like, you know, the FAQ answers, right? It's like the frequently asked questions. So these are, these are questions that people ask or ideal clients would ask either before they know that they need your firm's help or at the start of a project. So these are okay. topics that when they're searching online, hey, I have a problem or, you know, I'm, I'm looking for some sort of solution, I'm looking for ideas, I'm looking for potential people to help me with this. Those are the things that they're searching for online. So these questions, FAQs, kind of answer those initial questions. Now, you kind of hinted at this earlier about that there's kind of like a sales funnel that we like, you mm -hmm. know, this, this kind of, we call the FAQ answers. That's kind of what we call the tofu. That's the top of the funnel kind of content. It helps them build awareness. Then we have what's called the insider insights. So this is the type of content that helps you build rapport with your ideal future clients. So as they're digging deeper and trying to understand what you do and, you know, get interested in you and start to think about you as a, as you know, potential solution for them. This is the type of content that will help them see you as their advocate. So what is insider insights? It's really you being honest and open about your industry and highlighting things that they don't know that they don't know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what are some examples like this? Like it could be like unfair things that could happen on a project like uh, project getting held up by permitting, for example, mm -hmm. right? It mm -hmm. might be it might be something that they may not be on their radar, right? But right. if they kind of see that you're open and honest about it, it could be about hey, maybe it's about your frustration with unethical builders or builders right. who are cutting corners, right? Whatever it is that you identify as frustrations or things that might be unfair to your ideal future clients. So these are great topics to kind of build that rapport and trust with them. The third type of content is kind of those, what I call the decision makers. These are the pain points. We call them pain points. The, these are the things that can go wrong on a project and there are the problems that they'll want to avoid. Now, these work mm -hmm. extremely well when they're framed as part of like a written case study. So oh, the idea yeah. here, yeah. yeah, the idea is to use that pain point and talk about it like, Hey, our client came to this, came to us with this kind of brief, but we discovered this problem that mm -hmm. could have really derailed the project, but we're awesome. And we fixed this for them <laughs> and the project went on and they got everything they wanted. Right. It'd be, yeah. And it's great if they can even say it on exactly. behalf. Yeah. They yeah, tell if, the if story can, too. That it's like the gold, gold standard. Yeah. If they can, if you can work in that written or video testimonial as part of that, that's a deal maker right there. Mm -hmm. So we're, what we're trying to do is present information. It's going to help them see that, Hey, we can solve problems. We understand how things work. We have the expertise, the experience and talent to, to help you get your project done on time, on budget, all that, you know, all that great stuff. Yeah. 
I was going to say for this last one, the pain points, I know a lot of firms internally at the end of projects do like a postmortem yeah. or lessons learned. And so if marketers probably could get into those meetings oh, yeah. <laughs> or those yeah. discussions to help at least identify them. And, you know, and some you can talk about externally, some internally, but yeah. I think those are a lot of our firms are already having those conversations at the end of projects. They absolutely are. And I actually learned this process when, when we were in Switzerland, our firm worked a lot with a company. It was a power generation company. They both manufactured and did retrofits. And mm -hmm. so at the time we were trying to help their retrofit department get more projects. And so I said, well, I need to know what you guys actually do. I need to understand <laughs> your <laughs> process, how you do this, how you save people money and all this stuff. And that's exactly how we came up with this process it was that one of the chief engineers said, well, we need to have you in on our postmortem meetings. And I said, great. Yeah, let's do that. And so I got to sit in with all these engineers and the clients and they would just review everything that went on in the project. And I just sat there taking notes going, yeah. this is gold, this right? Is, yeah. And, and then what we did out of that, and the, the reason this stuff works so well is that it's not stuff you have to invent, right? It's not stuff you're like, oh, what are we going to write about today? You have the expertise in your firm, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the people working in your firm know the answers to all these questions, right? Mm -hmm. It's stuff they deal with. The FAQs, that's stuff they deal with every time a new client comes in, they're asking the same questions. So, you know, just being able to kind of, I guess, harvest this information from the people who are on the ground is, I, I think it's not, you know, it's not a daunting process when you look at it like that. It's just getting their time, getting them to talk about it, helping them with insightful questions, listening, leading them, you know, through the process and just gathering that information from them. You don't need to be sitting there going, well, what are we going to make up today? Right. <laughs> it's, it's really like, yeah. hey guys, what happened on this project? Tell me what, what were the key challenges? What did we, what were the unexpected things that came up that you saw? Yeah. And this type of content can work in a lot of different ways. I mean, how to articles, we can turn them into checklists. You know, you mentioned white papers earlier, more in-depth guides. We can do expert interviews. So ask our expert mm -hmm. series, right? Experience shares, you know, the best ofs, all, of, all these different types of content are easy to create when, when we have these stories kind of within the organization, when we understand what's going on in the organization. That's a big key to, do, yeah. I think, marketing success. And I, I am a big, my theme for this year has been repurposing content. So yeah, yeah. taking a piece of content and challenging myself, how many different ways can I use this and how many different formats can I use this same piece of content that way? Because, you know, sometimes it is challenging to get new content because people are busy, especially now, sure. but, but we have, like you said, it's there. We just need to harvest it. I liked that term, harvest it. And then it's up to us to then, you know, use it in various different formats and methods and deliver it different ways. Yeah, I think that's an important point. It's what are the different paths that we can take content? This is why I like to do, you know, part of our process when we go through this process is that we do interviews with our client. I have a one hour meeting with my clients who are, you know, part of our content development mm -hmm. program. We, we have a one hour meeting with them every month. And that is dedicated to content creation. And mm. it, it's, we have a list of topics that we've worked on. You know, we have a, we have a calendar. We say this month, we're going to talk about this topic. And that one hour interview, it's usually done the month before. That one hour interview is where we gather the information for that topic. So if we're going to talk about, I don't know, net zero, for example, Mm -hmm. Then the previous month, we're going to have an interview. I'm going to have a list of questions that I'm going to ask my client. I'm going to get them talking about it. And usually like in 30 to 60 minutes, we can get all the information we need. We can get everything we need for articles, social media posts, email newsletters, pretty much all the insights we need for 
uh, a whole block, a whole suite of content. Usually, you know, 10 to 12 social media posts will come out of that, two mm-hmm. articles. Yeah, it, it's pretty awesome process. So it's pretty much from the technical person, you're spending maybe 30 or 60 minutes of their time. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I like that approach. Yeah, we'll fill in the details. Like, you know, so right. So they'll we'll talk to them and ask them the questions. They'll give us their insights from the expertise point. But then we go and research that topic. We'll say, okay, we're talking about net zero. What is net zero? We need to first define that, right? <laughs> yes. And then, and, and so we'll do a little bit of research. We, we have some amazing tools that help us to, like if we put in a, a, a topic, it'll help us see what are the top 20 articles on that topic. It'll mm-hmm. pull out stats, quotes, mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff. And then we can, we can take that kernel that they gave us in the interview and expand that into a lot of different, a lot of different types of content. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I like that approach. Yeah. I think I might use that for my job when I have to get blog articles (laughs) from our consultants. Yeah. Yeah. So that sounds really easy. And I know we have a varying size firms with varying size marketing departments that listen to the podcast for those smaller firms out there that maybe have a marketing department of one, maybe sure. only a, like a lead principal or a couple principals. Can you still use a process like that to create consistent, high quality value added content? Yes. The answer is absolutely yes. <laughs> Here's the thing. So the last eight weeks, I just, just on Monday, I, I finished, but we did an eight week course on how to do this very process. And most of the people in that course were solo or, or very small firms actually. And the key is number one, having a repeatable process, Mm -hmm. right? There is some groundwork that you need to do up front. You need to, you know, kind of get clear on who your ideal future client is. You got to get clear on what are the questions and topics that are going to be key to those clients. You then have to do a little prep work on what are some topics I need to talk about. But if you also have clear and reasonable goals, I think a content strategy like this is very easy to kind of do if you make it a routine and priority, right? Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. the question I always ask people is if we do six to 12 articles over the next six to 12 months, and that results in for small firms, one or two dream projects for you, will it be worth it? And yeah. the answer is yes, absolutely, absolutely. always, yeah. without a doubt. So the important thing is the consistency, right? So having new content, whether it's every week, whether it's every month, whether it's, you know, I wouldn't recommend less than once a quarter, mm-hmm. but produce content on a regular basis. It, it doesn't have to be, you know, I think a lot of people get caught up and like, I don't know how I'm going to do an article every week. You don't have to, right? Yeah. yeah. What is, what are, what are you capable of doing, right? Right. So find a frequency that works for you. And honestly, I just don't know a better way of differentiating yourselves, right? I'm right. looking at a number of different firms. I land on your firm. I, you know, I gave you the example of my client the other day. I think it was last week that he called me and he's like, yeah, this guy found us online and he found an article and he decided that we were the, you know, it can happen like that. And I've, mm-hmm. I've seen other examples like that. Mm-hmm. So it's a great way to produce content, helps you get found online, helps people see you as an expert and just having that systematic, repeatable, it's also measurable, right? Mm-hmm. You can see how much traffic is coming to those blog articles. Are, are people staying on the page? It's very easy to manage and measure. And it can also, if you are a small firm, you know, and I, I know not a lot of small firms work with VAs, but uh, a lot of these processes are very easy to break down and delegate and have uh, a VA help you with. Right. You know, right. They're, they're, and not for outrageous costs either. Yeah. So, that's another thing to consider. And for, for our listeners, a VA is a virtual assistant. Yes. So it's somebody Sorry. you hire, yeah. usually, you know, a chunk of hours you pay for them, yep. you know, so it's not a full-time employee. I love VAs and outsourcing. I'm a big outsourcing 
especially for smaller firms, I feel like yeah. smaller firms, this type of producing high, consistent, high quality content on your website and promoting it through social media really levels the playing field and maximizes it's relatively cheap compared to other types of advertising, promotion, oh, um, much, sponsor, yeah. sponsorships that some of the quote unquote big firms with bigger budgets can do. It really helps to level the playing field in a comparably affordable way. Really, it's just time that you're paying for and your expertise, which you already have. It's just harvesting that into content and taking the time to do it. And then, you know, you can not only hire a VA to help with like posting and scheduling, but you can hire, well, people like you, Brian, (laughs) to help with the writing and help you keep you on track. So you don't need to have, if you have maybe one marketer or there's some firms I work with, the marketing person also helps with accounting or also helps with some project work or also helps with some administration tasks. And so at smaller firms, people wear a lot of multiple hats. So you might not be able to hire a full-time person, but hiring, you know, outsourcing an expert when you need them is very cost effective for the results <laughs> that you get. So, yeah, and, and even like, you know, let's say you don't want to hire a VA, right. Or, or you're like reticent about that. There's also services out there. One of them is, is called hire writers. And there's another one called text broker. These are services that have writers who are available to help you write content. Mm-hmm. So you can create a little video and answer these questions, you know, and answer some questions about a topic and uh, send that off to a writer as part of a brief. And for, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've used these services, they range in cost from, like, I think about probably about 50 to 60, maybe $70 for, you know, a thousand word article, not bad at all. And yeah, you have to do the groundwork. You have to put in uh, some time to kind of prep the brief, but it's fairly inexpensive. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you get this up, get this going. Mm-hmm. What are some ways I know people always ask me, like, we need to measure our success. We need to prove our ROI. So what is some advice you have to measure the success of a program like this or a strategy like this? Yeah, I love stats. I love looking at Google Analytics and things like this. I get really geeky about it, Mm -hmm. but I also find that I can waste a lot of time delving into all the particulars. So from my point of view, it's really important to define a few key metrics that are going to help you understand how things are doing, right? The number one metric for me and for my clients is, are we getting more calls? Are we getting more inquiries, mm-hmm. right? And that's that's a key metric for me. When we're measuring our marketing success, I want to make sure that we're moving the needle. But, you know, if you're looking at SEO specifically, increased traffic to your website, actions maybe taken on your website, like clicking on a call button, downloading something and entering a form, completing a form for an inquiry, something like that. On social media, look at things like, not necessarily likes and shares as much, but things like comments on posts, shares of posts. I love it when I can take a, like a LinkedIn post and actually start getting a conversation rolling in the comments. Yeah. That's gold. Yeah, um, like that. yeah. Takes, takes a little bit of time, but you know, you, you gotta, you gotta engage with people and stuff like that. That's, that's really important. You know, an audience growth, I guess, with not just anybody, but actually the people who might become your ideal future clients. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people love mm-hmm. Instagram, but, uh, you know, take a look at your followers. Are they other architects or are they actual potential clients? Right. Right. And make right. sure you're creating content that's actually going to gonna engage those clients more than it's going to engage your colleagues at the AIA. So I like to keep it simple. The way I measure SEO personally is uh, we use a, a tool. It's called SEM Rush or SEM Rush. I don't pay for this tool. It's I, I have a free account set up years ago, and there's two emails that it sends me periodically. One is my rank against 
other competitors that I've defined. So I have a list of 20 competitors and it, it will send me when my rank changes within a certain parameter, it'll send me an email saying, oh, you, your, your ranking has gone up or down. And it helps me to understand like, how am I doing among people who are creating similar content? That's my main objective there. And the other thing is that it allows me to track a list of keywords that are important to me. And I can change this list anytime, but for right now I'm in particular, I'm looking at keywords that are related to architecture firm marketing. And so it's tracking these 10 keywords and it will send me an email when my, my rankings, my search engine rankings, so that where I'm appearing in search results, if that changes dramatically. It'll send me a little notification saying, hey, you've either moved up or moved down Mm -hmm. in the Google rankings for these keywords. So those are, yeah, those are two really simple ways that I just, you know, I'm like, okay, how are we doing against other people who are writing similar content? And then how am I doing for some particular keywords? Yeah, great. Okay. So we're coming to the end of the show and that means one thing, my rapid fire questions. Are you ready for those? Yeah. Let me just take it, take it. I had to take a drink of water. There, okay. I'm, I'm good. good. You're, you're hydrating for these. Yeah. I love okay. it. So yeah. question number one is what is your number one piece of advice for marketers who are new to the AEC industry? So I think that people who are kind of new in the industry understand some of the new technology that is coming Mm. to help marketers. In particular, on name one is AI writing assistance or AI assistance in general. Just in the last eight months, I've seen huge advances in the ability to use AI to to do research, Mm. to actually write articles, write content, repurpose content. We talked about that. So AI tools, I I think any, you know, understand new technology, how it can help you and how it can be utilized. Don't be afraid of new technology. I see a lot of people like, oh, I could never use AI. Well, then you haven't used AI. (laughs) Yeah. It will blow your mind. (laughs) So I also feel that, you know, social media, a lot of people pay attention to social media and I while I think social media is great, the engagement from social media has to be really high in order for it to actually give you good value. And that means that you have to build a following Mm -hmm. and you have to get those followers to actually go to your website. Otherwise, the social media platform owns that audience, not you. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so for me, social media is always a moving target. And so I'm one of those people that I'm always about, well, what's the easiest way to get people to our website? And usually it's not social media. I understand social media. I understand its role. I, I understand its importance. But for me, if I'm going to use social media, that's going to play a role. It's, it's got to be about, let's get them back to the website from social media so we can convert them into mm-hmm. an actual, yeah, you know, put them on our list and actually engage with them directly. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. Technology, technology, technology. Mm. And I, I, I want to emphasize that because a lot of marketers that I work with, they're like, eh, I'm afraid of technology or like, you know, especially cause I work with them on the CRM and they're like, yeah. you know, we'll just let it or database administrator, or, you know, you do that. And it's like, no. this is where marketing is heading. I mean, our marketing is here. It, it, yeah. It's very technology based and it's only going to get more so. Um, our, our firm right now is in the process of automating many tasks in our organization. We have, you know, we have an international team. We have a staff member in India, one in Ireland, and then a few others here in the States. We're all remote mm-hmm. and we are now looking, we're working with an agency to automate many of our tasks that previously were, you know, like my, my wife is my business partner. She said, you know, before, like, it only takes me 15 minutes to do this email. Well, now we have an automation for that email and it mm-hmm. doesn't take her 15 minutes anymore. And all this stuff adds up. Our goal is to save her a day a week. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's exciting. I may have to, after you get that up and running, I might need to um, yeah. have you back I'll, on to I'll, talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, okay. So question number two is, what has been your favorite or most memorable win? That's a great question. I mentioned this client had a recent win earlier in the discussion, but about a year ago in July, 2020, right at the height of you know the first wave, we had just finished redesigning their website and we were about, I don't know, you know, it was about three months into utilizing our program, with, which we call the expertise engine. That's the, the whole process I described earlier with the interview and so forth. So we've been applying this for them, helping to create new content on their website, social media. Because of that, they landed a $6 million dream project with a nonprofit. It was animal welfare organization on the West coast of Florida. A uh, huge project for them. It was largest in their firm's history, 17 year history. And following on to that, they have been fully booked. Uh, they're, like I said, his biggest problem right now is finding new employees. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, that's awesome. Congratulations on that. Thank you. That makes you feel good. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. So, yeah. It's great when, and it's great that he acknowledges it too. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, like he came to me and said, you know, because, we on our anniversary, I think, you know, it was, uh, we had been working for him for a year. Last November, he, he called me up and he's like, so we need to talk about future, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I was, he's one of these guys that, you know, he's kind of like very straightforward and you don't always know where he's at <laughs> and his, his, you know, he's, he's very good. He'd probably be a good poker player. So I said, so do you, you know, are you seeing kind of like, you know, just give me a heads up on this. I want to be prepared for the meeting. Are you, know, are you thinking that you might stop working with us? And he kind of bursts out. And he, he starts laughing. He's like, hell no. He's like, <laughs> this is full gas, man. He's yeah. like, I want to take this as far as we can. So um, this is great. That's awesome. Congrats again. Okay. Last rapid fire question for today. What yeah, are I, you excited been about? Rapid. I'm, 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 taking way too long to answer this, but that's okay. What am that's I, okay. what am I excited about? Well, you know, I mentioned technology and I am not a techno geek. I, I used to be an earlier, er, an early adopter. And now I'm, I'm more cautious in my adoption, but I am really excited about the tools and technology that are coming out. I mentioned AI assistance, right? There's mm-hmm. AI writing assistance, mm-hmm. there's AI research assistance. There's there's also AI now. We use a tool that helps us to, like when we publish a blog article, it will actually go, it'll grab all the images from that article. It'll grab quotes from that article. It'll, it'll suggest hashtags. And then it creates a campaign for us automatically to share that article over a period that we define. So usually when we do a new blog article, we will, we will schedule that blog article for the next year. Right. Mm -hmm. So big mistake that a lot of firms make is they only, they only publish their blogs. Like they publish it and then they think, oh, we did our work. No, you actually got (laughs) to promote it. Right. So we look at, there's this great tool. It's called missing letter. So it's spelled missing letter, just like you would, but the last E is missing. So it's L T T L E T T R missing letter.com. And this tool is amazing. You hook it up to your blog, you hook it up to your social media. And then when you publish that blog, it sends you an email and says your new campaign is ready. And you go in, it's got hashtags set. It pulls the images and pulls quotes. And, and you can edit everything to, mm-hmm. to your mm-hmm. taste, but you can basically like within a few minutes, you can create a year's worth of social wow. media. Wow. Wow. It's awesome. I'm yeah. going to have to check that out for marketers take flight. I was using another one, a plugin called revive old posts and mm. that was okay. It was okay, but I'll check this one out. This sounds interesting. I, I, I like this because what you can do, it, it's not like, you know, like you remember when we had to like go in and it was like, oh, we got to set the date and the time. And it, mm-hmm. uh, and it was, it was just laborious. What I like about this is that you just say, oh, I want to do 12 posts over the next year. Yeah. So it'll figure out the cadence, like it, and you can create templates for this, but so it'll do like for, for a 12 post thing, you know, a cycle, 
it'll put more posts at the beginning of that and kind of fade them out. Right. So, and then, and then you define the slots. So you can say, Hey, I wanted to post on these days. So I don't want it to post on weekends, but I want to post on, let's say Tuesday through Friday. Right. Mm -hmm. You can define the timeframes and then it will, it will organize the calendar when you post these, it'll organize everything. So nothing gets overlapped or, or whatever. It's just brilliant. Definitely. Really good, really good tool. Yeah, I definitely have to check that out. So that is very exciting. The more we can automate in our lives, you know, in our daily repetitive tasks, the more we can automate that or use AI for that, the more like creation we can do. That, yeah, exactly. And yeah. that's the way I look at it. Like, I don't want to sit there and rewrite an email every time, you know, <laughs> yes. I, you know, so, so for me, I want to spend, I'm, I want to reserve my brain time for thinking and being creative mm-hmm. and coming up with ideas. Mm-hmm. And so anything I can automate that is repetitive and routine, or if I can't automate it, try to delegate it. But mm-hmm. there's a lot of tools out there now that help you, help you streamline things. And I, yeah, I'd love to come back once we get our automation system set up and, and talk about that. Yeah, that'd be cool. We totally geek out then. Okay. So thank you for being on the show today. I just have one more question for you and that's tell us how listeners can find you, work with you, give us all the details on that. All right. So first of all, I love to connect with people on LinkedIn. So if you made it this far in this podcast, please reach out to me on LinkedIn and let me know that you heard me on this episode. I would love to hear what you thought about the episode. So please connect with me on LinkedIn. It's, you can search for Brian McCartney, which will be my correct spelling. My name will be in the show notes, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Or search for Brilliant Brian. That's my, that's my LinkedIn handle. It's on my social media handle for everything. That's, that's number one. Please connect with me. I'd love to connect with people, especially other marketers and and, uh, people who are in the industry. Number two, go to our website, arcmark.co, A-R-C-H-M-A-R-K.co, uh, not dot .com, dot .co. Go check out our blog. We've got some great articles to help you kind of understand a little bit more about content marketing, some of these different types of content that I talked about. And yeah, there's some great articles there that will hopefully help you understand how we see things and mm-hmm. some of our, how we work with our clients. Number three, if you're really interested in SEO, if you want to learn more about the process that I described today, actually have a course for that. It's a DIY course. You can go through this training. It's got tons of templates and worksheets and so forth. It's called SEO for architects.com. Title's a little bit misleading. We, it's more than SEO. It's SEO, the content process. We talked about the expertise engine and also a bit about social media and using missing letter to schedule out our, our social media. So really good, very, very value packed course. Like I said, we just wrapped that up at the live cohort, but now it's available as an on-demand course. And you can also on that website, SEO for architects.com, if you go to SEO architects.com slash webinar, you can attend an on-demand webinar that we recorded that will help you understand that process in more detail. Awesome. Awesome. For our listeners, I will provide links to all of that and all of these great resources in the show notes page. So if you're in the car or walking the dog and couldn't write those down, they'll be linked up in the show notes page. So thanks again, Brian, for coming on the show today. Thank you, Lindsay. I really appreciate you having me. It's been great talking to you today and I wish everybody a great rest of your day, week, and year. Well, okay, marketers, there you have it. We made it. So I know that these were a little bit longer episodes, this episode and the one before, but I, I know I walked away with a ton of notes and a ton of actionable items that I can go take back to my day job and for marketers take flight and start applying them. I'm really excited to try the new tool on the missing letter.com. I'm really excited to look at Brian's blog for ArcMark and get some good ideas and look into his SEO course. So those will all be linked up in the show notes page. So you can go look over there and find the show notes and 
I'll link up to his LinkedIn profile as well so you can connect with him. And then let me know what you think. You can leave a comment over on the show notes page or you can give me a rating or a review wherever you listen to these podcasts. And let me know what you think about these series of episodes because that really helps me shape the editorial content and the podcast content calendar moving forward. Okay, so that is it for me today. Until next time, bye for now.